Hi guys, and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. This is the fourth video in the beginner series in which we will be making a 2D apple picker game. Today we will create the countdown timer for the player to see, as well as the game over screen. Just before we start, if you find this video helpful, remember to smash like and subscribe because it shows me that someone is getting value out of my work. Without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I'll do is open up the timer script. Then in it, I'll change the game duration from a float to an integer. Then remember to move the F at the end, which stands for float. Underneath the high score text, I'll create a new variable, which will be public text timer text. And now I'll scroll down to our countdown timer function. Remove the first line, since we won't be needing that anymore. And then I'll create a for loop. So type for int i is equal to game duration while i is more than or equal to zero we'll run this loop and every time the loop runs we'll decrease i by one using i minus minus now we can say game duration is equal to i timer text dot text like we've done before is equal to game duration dot to string what this loop does is it instantiates a new variable called i to the value of game duration. Now this loop will keep on running as long as i is greater than or equal to zero. And every time the loop runs, i will decrement. That means decrease by one. So if our game duration is 60, this loop will run 60 times. And at the start, i will equal 60, then 59, and so on. At the end of the loop, I have to remember to say yield, return, new, wait for seconds, and input 1 for 1 second. Now if I return back to the editor, give it a moment to compile, then I can right click in the hierarchy and go to UI and create a new text element, which I'll call timer. I'll set the default text to 00. zero colon zero zero which is the typical timer format set the color to white font size to 50 set its size to 200 by 100 so that the text will fit into the box set the anchor to top center and position to zero on the x and negative 75 on the y next i'll align it horizontally in the center great I'm also going to select our score and high score text. And as you can see, the font size is already 40. I forgot to change it back from the last time I recorded this. As all of these values are preference based, you can set them to whatever you would like to. Next, I'll select our game timer and drag and drop our timer into its slot on the timer text. Now I should be able to hit play and see it working. Well, the timer seems to be counting down, and everything else is still working, but it's not in the format that we wanted it to be, with minutes, a colon, and then seconds. So let's see what we can do to fix that. I'll go back into the script, and then in here, we'll need to do a bit of maths. I'll make some space, and then I'll say string minutes is equal to math f dot floor game duration over 60 dot to string and in quotes zero zero under that i'll say string seconds is equal to game duration modulus 60 dot to string and again zero zero in quotes finally the timer text will not say the game duration but it will say minutes plus a colon plus seconds. And then as per before, we'll still yield return new for wait for one second. This is just a bit of math, which will convert the time left into a timer format. To get the minutes, we divide the game duration by 60, which is pretty intuitive since we have 60 seconds in a minute. Then we round it down, which is what math.floor does, and two string converts the integer that we get into a string. The zero zero inputs tells it to keep it to two characters and fill in the blank spaces with zeros. 
To get the second, we use the modulus operator, which is just like division, but it returns the remainder rather than the result. Then we convert it to a string, just like before. Now if I return back to the editor, we should be able to test it out. You can see that the timer format is now correct, so let's move on to making the game over screen. To do this, I'll right click in the canvas and create a new panel. I'll rename this to game over screen. Then set its color to black and its opacity to 200. Inside of here, I'll create a new UI text element and call this the game over text. I'll set the text to say game over in all caps. Set its color. Then set its font size to 150. Its anchor to top center. Size to 1000 on the X by 200 on the Y so that it can fit the text and position to 0 minus 200. Finally, I will align the text horizontally in the center. Underneath this, I'll create a new UI button, which I'll call the restart button. I'll set its color to a grayish color, then its size to 350 by 85, position to 0, minus 100. And then I'll expand this element, click on the text, and make its font size 40. I'll also make it say restart. The button doesn't actually do anything yet, but we'll fix that in a moment. For now, let's return back to the timer script, and at the top, we can declare a new variable, which will be public game object game over screen. All we have to do here is in the game over function, we'll activate it using game over screen dot set active and pass in true. Now we can go back to the editor, select our game over screen, and in the inspector, uncheck the checkbox to disable it. Now if I click on the game timer and assign the game over screen, I'll set the game duration to 5 seconds just for testing, then hit play. And we should see the game over screen pop up when the game ends. Great, that's working. So now let's add a bit more information to the game over screen. I'll stop the game and re-enable the game over screen. I'll create a new text object within it, so UI text, and call this final score. I'll set the text to say score colon 100 by default, position to 0, 0, alignment will be center horizontally and vertically. I'll set its size to 500 by 75, and then the font color to be white. I'll also set its font size to 50 so that we can see it better. Next, I'll select the element in the hierarchy, hit Ctrl D to duplicate it, and rename it to Final High Score. I'll set the default text to say High Score colon 150, then its position on the Y to be negative 100. You can see that this intersects with our restart button. So I'll select our restart button and move it down to negative 260. Finally, to set these text values, I'll go back into the timer script and create two new variables, which will be public text final score text and public text final high score text. Now, before we set the game over screen to active, we want to set these values so that the player doesn't see them update. To do this, we'll simply say final score text dot text is equal to score in quotes colon space and then add on our basket dot score. The final high score text 
dot text can be set equal to high score plus player prefs dot get int and pass in a high score key. Now if I return back to the editor, all should be working. I'll select our game timer, assign the final score and final high score texts, disable our game over screen, and then hit play to test it out. Great, you can see that our score and high score have been updated. The final thing we have to do is make the restart button work. So I'll exit play mode, and then re-enter our game timer script. To do this, we will have to be using Unity Engine dot scene management, and then at the very bottom, I'll create a new function. This will have to be public so that it can be accessed by the button. It will return no value, so it will be void, and I'll call it restart. Inside this function, all we have to say is scene manager dot load scene. And as you can see, it wants a scene name as input. Since we want to restart the game, we just want to load the same scene that we are currently in. So I'll say scene manager dot get active scene to get our current scene, then dot name to get the name of the current scene. I'll return back to the editor, select our restart button, and scroll down in the inspector until you see the onclick list. I'll hit plus to add a new function, then drag and drop our game timer into the object, and from it, select our timer script and restart. Now if I run the game, everything should be working. One issue we haven't addressed yet is that if you collect a red apple, you can actually get a negative score. The fix for this is very simple, so I'll open up Visual Studios, go into our basket script, and then find on trigger enter 2D where we are adding our score text. Underneath this line, I'll say score equals mathf dot clamp score zero and int dot max value. What this is saying is make sure that the score never goes below zero, but it can be as high as you want it to be. Now if I return back to the editor and test it out. You can see that collecting a red apple will never make our score go below zero. Whether this is or isn't something you want is up to you, but just in case you did want it, here's the solution. Now just for a final demo, I'll set the timer to 60 seconds, maximize the screen, and play the game. That's it for this tutorial series. If you want to extend the game by adding a main menu or your own features, I would encourage you to go ahead and do that. If you want to see more content like this, remember to hit like and subscribe as it really motivates me to keep putting more videos out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.